Hello, this is Andrew Osio from Expression College from Digital Arts. And I'm going to be showing you today how to model a bridge using polygons and curve modeling. Uh, for those who that are used to polygon modeling, curves may seem new, but there's some very powerful things you can do with them. Uh, my first part of this lecture is rather an ordinary polygon modeling lecture, so we're just going to quickly model this, though. Just going to grid snap the bottom of this uh, box to the grid. And then I'm going to subdivide this grid, which is now known as add divisions. So I need a few more polygons, not too many. Try never to use too many. Then I'm going to tell you to take an edge here, and I'm just going to delete it by uh, holding on the control button, right mouse, and selecting edge loop, utilities, edge loop, delete, and deleting and cleaning up that edge. Now I'm ready to kind of do some extrude work here. So we're just going to take those four faces and extrude them. Hold them up like this. Use my scale tool to uniformly scale them in. And then I'm going to select the corner vertices. And scale them in a little farther. And that gives me the illusion of an octagon, which is essentially a roundish shape. And so that will allow me to transition from a square to a round shape. So we're going to use the insert loop tool to create a loop closer to the round part of the transition and then push that down. And then this will allow us to uh, create a transition that might be associated with a, a um, lading tool. So I'm making a bridge post here. And with a few insert loop tools we can quickly establish that by inserting a loop and doing a transform component for pointing this out like this. Okay, really nice. So we've got, kind of got a simple base and then we made a transition to a, a round shape. And we'll extrude again. And we're going to pull this up now to about here. And then we're going to extrude the top and shrink it down a little like this. And it's going to kind of have a little mushroom cap on it, which is very stylistic of uh, Japanese tea gardens, very organic, but also very um, geometric. And I can do that by just inserting a couple loops like this. And then keep hitting Y. And then we can quickly find our shape by simply inserting loops and scaling in the results. It's pretty rare that I'll insert a loop and not do anything with it because then it's sort of a wasted loop. Why, why insert a loop if you don't plan on scaling, moving it, or change it in some fashion? So it makes things model a little faster that way. So that works out pretty good. That's a very simple little mushroom cap on there. And now we're going to take this whole post and we're going to shrink it down just a little for scale's sake, like this. And I'm going to scale down the whole thing a lot smaller, something like that. And maybe going to just move it off to the side. Now it comes for the curve parts. So we're going to go to our curves tab and make a freeform curve. We're going to say where, what two sides of the uh, uh, grid area with my bridge going to begin. So I'm just going to start five grid points back over here and five grid points back over there. I just click twice and then hit enter. And that makes my initial curve. Now for those of you that are new to uh, curves, what we're working here is with a cubic curve. And cubic curves have control points known as control vertices. And a, a simple curve like I just made has control vertices that you can move up and down. And with every cubic curve you get four altogether, two at the ends and two in the middle. So I'm making a nice little arch here. If I want to see the display a little nicer, I'm just going to hit the three button. And here's the real trick. We're going to make um, some copies of this post follow this curve. And that way we can duplicate it and we can uh, position them precisely and, and model very quickly. So I'm just going to take this uh, <coughs> object here and I'm going to shift select the curve. I'm going to go to the Animation tab and uh, go down the Animation menu and go to Motion Paths and Attach to Motion Path. 
Uh, first time you use this, you want probably to uh, check the option box. It's one of these functions that it's fairly important to check the uh, option box. So we're going to check that. And it says time slider. I usually use the start and end function. And the end function, the end time, happens to be the same number of posts that I would like on this bridge. So let's just say I'm going to make about um, a dozen posts. So I'm just going to type in 12. And that's about it. The last thing you need to uh, worry about is this concept of follow. If this is checked, at least for this example, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to use the follow function a little later, uh, but I don't need it for now. And I'm just going to do an attach. So as you can see from my work, as I scrub the time bar, my post now actually hangs on the curve right at the pivot point. Now once an object is attached to a motion patch and has actual motion, you can go back to the same set of functions and slightly above it is something called the Create Animation Snapshot. I'm going to choose the option box for this as well and use the same numbers for my end time, 12. Uh, if it wasn't set to time, sl uh, off the t uh, if it wasn't set to start and end, I'm going to set it so, but I'm going to make sure it's 12. That's the function I usually use. And we're going to do a snapshot. That's going to make my 12 posts follow there. What Snapshot does, it's really quite, quite clever, is it moves the object, and as it moves the object, it makes a copy for it. And you can check it in the outliner. It actually does it in a nice little group. The original object is still there, so if you don't need it, you may want to actually manually make sure you delete it. So it's not just sitting on top of there. But there's a beginning of a bridge right there. Now I want to take this group and uh, maybe offset it just a little bit over here. And then I'm going to duplicate the group and put my posts over here. So I'm pretty close to uh, being done, being that there are only three main components of this bridge. Uh, there's going to be um, some planking to actually walk on and some rails. So to make the planking, all I really need is a polygon cube like this. And we'll scale it down and make it very plank-like. Make it approximately as wide as we need. We can always adjust the scale later on. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this object and the motion, uh, the curve or the motion path as it's going to become and choose animate motion paths, attach to motion path. This time I'm going to do it a little bit different. I do want it to follow because basically follow allows me to kind of bank this piece of wood as it goes over the bridge so I can arch it. So we click on the follow. Now a lot of confusing information here but there's only two things that are really important for this example. You need to know the front and the up axis which is if you were actually on this object traveling along on this path which direction would you face and which direction would be up. Well, up is always in the Y, at least uh, if your computer is set to um, Y up. Whatever axis is pointing up is usually the up axis. The follow is uh, not always as simple, but basically it's the direction that the curve is actually moving in. And as you can see, this is moving in a negative Z direction, so my front axis is actually a Z axis. So I'm going to do an attach. And as you can see, if I scrub the time bar now, my uh, plank actually moves along the curve 